Hello, my name is Anthony Brotodo. I'm from Rennes in France. Um, today, I'm going to show you how you can use Galaxy to perform a genome annotation of uh, a eukaryote uh, using uh, um, fun annotate. So we will use the genome of uh, fun fungi species, Mucor musedo, uh, which is a 40 megabases long genome. And we'll try to predict all the genes on this genome. Uh, to do this, we will use Fun Annotate, which is uh, designed to perform um, uh, genome annotation. Originally, it was written for fun fungal uh, genomes, but now it's, it works on uh, all uh, eukaryotic uh, genomes. Um, and um, Fun Annotate, to predict gene on a genome, needs some uh, evidences data, like uh, alignment of proteins or transcript from uh, other species, or uh, using RNA-seq data uh, that was sequenced on the same genome you're trying to annotate. Um, Fun annotate also uses ab initio predictors like Augustus and SNAP, but uh, it is done uh, entirely internally by a Fun annotate. You don't have to, to specify this. Uh, once we have run fun annotate to produce our gene prediction, we will uh, run some functional annotation tools, uh, in particular Eggnog Mapper and uh, Interproscan, which will uh, be able to assign some genes, uh, names, and function uh, to our prediction. And finally, we'll try to evaluate the quality of, the, of our annotation to compare it with another annotation and to uh, visualize it uh, using JBrowse. So as I said, we're going to annotate Mucor musedo uh, species. Um, if you look in the training material, um, the sequence of the genome uh, was assembled using uh, some uh, sequencing data and this um, this tutorial, genome assembly using PAC Pack bio data. So if you run this tutorial, um, you will be able to uh, to reconstruct the genome sequence we will use for the annotation tutorial today. And after having uh, assembled the, the genome, um, we have followed the uh, repeat masking tutorial in the genome annotation section, uh, which is here. And there's a video for that too, which you can um, follow all along to produce the genome uh, ready to be uh, uh, annotated in Galaxy using Fun Annotate. So let's begin this tutorial. Um, first, we need to find our uh, tutorial, which is here, genome annotation with Fun Annotate. Then I create a new uh, history that I will name Fun Annotate. And the first step will be to, uh, to get the data we want to analyze. And so if you look at the beginning of the, of the tutorial, you get all the, the, the URLs to get the, the data directly into your history. So we just copy this whole block and you upload the data by pasting here all the all these URLs. And you click on start and wait a little. It will become green soon. OK, so the data sets are green now. And uh, we can have a brief look at uh, the content of each one. So the first one is genome masked. That's the sequence of our genome we, would, we want to, to annotate today. So you can have a preview here. Um, that's it. As you can see, probably, yes, there are some regions that are soft masked by repeat masker in the previous repeat masking tutorial. That, that information will be used by Fun Annotate to correctly predict genes um, on the genome. Then you have a few other uh, data sets. The two 
uh, following ones are RNA-seq data. So it's just uh, FASTQ uh, data uh, directly from an Illumina sequencing uh, uh, data set. So it's paired data with a read ones and read twos. Uh, okay, then we have some SwissProt subset. So these are um, sequence of proteins uh, from SwissProt uh, that were prepared uh, because these sequences uh, are found on the genome we want to annotate and they will be used by Fun Annotate to correctly predict genes based on this uh, expected sequence. So these se sequences come from other species like uh, Solanum lycos persicum, for example, but there are many, many other organisms that are, yeah, that have proteins similar to what is found on our genome. In real life, you would want to align the whole Swiss prot uh, on, the, on your new genome you want to annotate, but here for the tutorial, we reduce this Swiss prot database to, to only a subset to speed up uh, the computing. And then we have three other uh, data sets that will be explained a bit uh, more later. Um, first, alternate annotation. So these are um, files from another uh, annotation that was performed a bit differently. And at the end of this tutorial, we try to compare our results uh, of the annotation we, we, we will perform with an annotate and this other annotation to see which one is the best. And finally, template.sbt is a file from NCBI because um, we will use this file to try to, to, to prepare on an, our annotation to, uh, to submit it someday on the NCBI uh, server. Okay, so uh, as a first step in, a, in our tutorial here, um, we have uploaded the data, okay. And now we want to prepare the genome sequence. Uh, so we will use two tools, fun annotate assembly clean, um, and then sort assembly. Assembly clean, we'll try to run it here. We'll just select the genome sequence from our history. And then as you see, there are a few parameters. Uh, that means that in our genome, we will try to uh, remove some uh, sequences that are not useful. Um, first, all the contigs that are um, shorter than 500, megab uh, 500 bases will be removed from the assembly because these contigs are, are very short and there's a low probability that you can find some gene on them. And this tool will also try to identify um, uh, repeated um, uh, sequences like uh, chunks of contigs that are uh, included into another one, which can happen, for example, in um, diploid genomes. Uh, so this step is not mandatory. Maybe you will have an assembly to annotate that is already uh, considered to be perfect and you don't want to clean it more. But in this tutorial, we do it to make sure we have a, a perfect genome. So that's it. We run it. And then we will want to sort the assembly because uh, at the end of this tool, we will have a, a lot of uh, contigs uh, that will be uh, randomly uh, sorted with the short ones in the middle uh, of the file. So here this tool will ensure the longest contigs come first. And it will also ensure the name of the contigs uh, will be uh, standardized to, uh, for the rest of the analysis. Um, so we just need to select the output of the clean step. We want to make sure all the contigs name will be based on the prefix, which will be scaffold, and then around, um, an incremented number starting from zero. Um, and we don't want to filter uh, shorter contigs because um, we've already done that in the previous step. So we don't need to do it again. We execute it and we wait a little now. 
Okay, so now the, the assembly is cleaned and sorted. We can just have a quick look at the, at the FASTA file. First, the cleaning. Um, as you can see, the sequence looks quite the same. But if you look at the number of sequences, you only get 1,425 sequences, while the original uh, genome sequence contained 1,461 uh, sequence. They look like that, just as expected. And after sorting here, so if you look in the clean the um, uh, clean the sequence, you have headers that look like contig 1000. If you look at the sorted one, they all have standard names like scaffold one scaffold two, etc. And the longest one is at the beginning of the file. That, that's what we need uh, for the rest of the tutorial. So we don't want to, to look at the whole file. And we still have the masked regions that are like this in lower case. So we are ready for the, the rest. Um, to perform annotation, fun annotate, like all the uh, annotation tools for eukaryotic uh, uh, genomes need uh, RNA-seq data because these data correspond to the section of the genome that were expressed in a living cell, which indicate regions when the, where there are some genes on the genome. Uh, here we have a, a data set here in FASTQ format, forward and reverse data set that correspond to data from the sequence read ar archive. And we will just take this FASTQ file and try to map them on the genome to identify all the regions that were expressed in the conditions uh, of this data set. So to perform the mapping, we will use a very widely, very widely used tool, which is STAR. Uh, it's, in the, it's here, if you search for STAR, and we just select RNA STAR. Um, here we have some paired data, so we say, okay, we have paired, da paired in data as individual data sets, R1 and R2. So the forward read is R1 and the reverse reads is R2. Um, and these reads, uh, we want to map them using a, re a reference genome that is in, in our history here. It's the sorted and cleaned assembly data set number nine. Um, and finally, uh, we'll set this uh, length of ASA pre-indexing string to 11. That's, uh, it's explained in the tutorial. It's not um, a magical number. If you, if you have left uh, 14 here, you would have an, a warning in the output of the tool saying that you should use 11. So here we already know it, so we put 11, but you have a way to, to find this. Okay, so we can leave all the other options by default and execute. So in a moment, you will see uh, the output of this mapping step. All right, so now the mapping is finished. Um, the, you, you get three data sets. Um, the least interesting one is splice junction dot bed file, so it's just the position of splice, splicing junctions on your genomes. You can safely delete it. You will not use it in this tutorial. Uh, the other two data sets are quite interesting. Um, if you look at the log file here, you will get information on the on the on the results of your mapping and the most important uh, uh, line is probably unique uniquely mapped reads 96 percent which is very good which means 96 percent of the data from the fastq file were correctly mapped on the genome uh, so this is quite satisfying and it means the RNA-seq data was uh, of good quality and we can use it for the rest of the annotation and if you look at the MAM file here, so this is not really uh, 
useful to read it line by line, but it's the content of the alignment of each read on the genome. Okay, so with this data, we should be able now to run our structural annotation. So now it's time to run fun annotated predict. Um, so you can find it again here. So you have all the tools of the fun annotated suite. We will take this one. So that's really the place where you will um, uh, uh, determine which option to use for fun annotate and it's very important to fill it correctly. So first we want to specify on which assembly we want to, to perform the annotation. So once again it's the sorted and cleaned assembly as we, we have prepared it at the beginning of the tutorial. Then we have to select the, the latest database from uh, fun annotate. So depending on the instance of where of Galaxy where you're running this tutorial, uh, you might have different values, just take the latest one. Um, okay, uh, you can leave this option on. Uh, what is important after is to specify a few information about your the organism you want to annotate. So it's a species name first, we call Misedo. A strain name, so here we have Muk1. Oh, no, it's not the isolate name, it's a strain name here. Um, there is this question, is it a, a fungus uh, species? Uh, I, I recommend to set it to no, unless you know what you're doing, because uh, if you specify that it is one, it will run an additional tool, which is coding query, which might give some um, not so good result depending on the input data sets. And it can even uh, uh, make the, the whole fun annotated, fun annotated tool to, to fail, depending uh, on the data you provide. So on, in this tutorial, uh, you set it to no, and in real life, you would probably want to test with or without and see if it works better in a, in a case or not. Then the most important part is the evidences. So that's where you will give uh, as much as as many data that can be used by fun annotate and the tools that it will launch to uh, find the correct uh, gene structure. So first we have some RNA-seq data. So we just give the output of star here. Um, then we don't have uh, full mRNA or EST sequences, so we just don't select one here. But we have some protein sequences. So by default, you should use SwissProt. But in this tutorial, to speed up the computing, we select the subset, as I explained a bit earlier. So it's SwissProt subset.fasta. And um, that's it. And then you have the Busco setting. So Busco is a data set of genes that are uh, expected to be found in one single copy in a specific uh, phylum. So for example, if you select here uh, something the, the, the most the, the closest to a species, so the mucoales uh, taxon, um, Busco will provide a list of protein sequence that are uh, found in most of the species of this clade. Um, and so we expect to find them in this genome. And, uh, and Fenalotet will be able to use this data to train the ab initio predictors to recognize a, a gene in this particular species we are annotating. Here we want also for Augustus to, um, to specify a, speech, uh, a clad the most uh, the closest to uh, the genomes we want to, to annotate. So here it's Rhizopus arizae. And I think that's it. Afterwards, you can filter the result of finality to say, for example, I, I don't want to have some uh, genes with a very short intron. So maybe you could say I want uh, maybe uh, introns that are this size um, at the minimum. Here we will just leave the value as default. So it's 10 and you can have some other filters here. And you can even select some 
advanced option here if you if you know exactly what you're doing. Um, at the end, we here we want to select which output we will get from uh, from uh, final annotate, and here uh, we want to have everything. And I guess that's it. Um, you can then execute. So this step will take a bit of time because uh, what Fun Annotate will do is take your RNA-seq data and, uh, and uh, yeah, take this data, takes the protein sequences from Swiss Prod subset, try to align them on the genome, then uh, run a few ab initio predictors like Augustus and SNAP, try also to align some Busco uh, sequences from the, the cloud uh, uh, of this species. And from all these data, after aligning, the, aligning them uh, correctly, uh, Fenotet will try to produce uh, good quality gene predictions, taking into account all these data. Um, so that's a real genome we want to analyze here. So it will take a bit of time, so maybe two hours or things like that. So maybe it's a good um, it's the good moment to, to take a break and have a cup of coffee, coffee and, and come back later to see the result. Or so you can um, continue to follow the tutorial to, to launch the following steps and then get the final result at, at the end and, uh, and look back at uh, each step afterwards. It's just as you prefer. Here, I will uh, just pause the recording and, uh, and come back when the result is there. Okay, so for annotate predict is finished. Now we have all the data sets green. We can have a look at them one by one. The first one is the gene bulk format annotation. So that's the whole uh, annotation in gene, gene bulk format as uh, on the NCBI or EBI websites. <clears throat> um, so you can see the position of each gene on the genome with an identifier, which is uh, we always have uh, the fun prefix and uh, uh, an incremented number after that. And you have the sequence of the protein and, um, and the position of the exons and CDS, etc. You can get the same information in GFS3 format, which is much uh, widely used. Okay, I just have to click. It will come soon. There we go. So the GFF format is always the same. You have it's a tabular format. The first column is the, the scaffold where the gene was found. The second one is the source. So here all the genes were, were predicted by fun annotate. And then here, um, well, each line is a feature uh, with a start and end position on the genome on a specific scaffold. And in this third column, you have the type of the feature. So you always get a gene then an mRNA, then the exons in this mRNA, and the corresponding CDS, the coding sequences uh, included in, the, in these exons. So you have the position of each one, uh, the strand, um, and you have some basic information uh, afterwards. So an, an identifier for the gene for the mRNA, the relation between the gene and the mRNA is here, and then you have the identifiers for each exon and CDS. As you can see here, we just know the position of the gene with a random uh, identifier. And the only uh, information about this gene is hypothetical protein. You don't know the function of this protein. You can have a look at all the genes. They all have hypothetical protein. So in the next step, we will learn how to assign a good names and, and function to these genes. Um, if we continue to look at the data sets, we have uh, an NCBI TBL annotation file, which is yet another format for the same information. Uh, and then we have three important files, which are uh, first the mRNA sequences, so the full transcript uh, that can be seen. It should come soon. Here we go. So we have um, the mRNA sequence come be beginning by an ATG uh, most of the time. 
Um, then we have the CDS sequence. So the difference between CDS and mRNA is that uh, in mRNA, if an annotate was able to predict some uh, untranscripted, uh, untranslated regions uh, in three prime or, or five prime of the gene, they will be in the mRNA sequence, but they won't, won't be in the CDS sequence. Here, they all became, because, um, they all start with an ATG, which means uh, uh, it's the same in the mRNA sequence five. So it means that there are not a lot of untranslated regions that were predicted. We will be able to check that using JBRAS a bit later. And of course, you get also the protein sequences of each uh, gene that was predicted. Mm, that's it. Another important uh, data set is the stats uh, file. So if you look at it here, um, you, you first um, have a trace of how the pre uh, fun annotate was launched to produce the result you get. That's not very in interesting on its own, but afterwards you have uh, the exact version, the date of how it, uh, when it was launched, and also the exact version of all the databases and data that was used by Fun Annotate um, to, to predict the genes. So that's very important to keep this uh, information. Finally, you, you have some statistic on the assembly. So all this information, we already knew it before annotating, the size of the genome, the number of contig. That's not very surprising. But now the most important part is the annotation statistics here. So uh, by looking at it, you see that Fun Annotate predicted uh, uh, 30,000 uh, genes in our genome. Uh, and you have the corresponding number of mRNA and tRNA. You have the average uh, gene length, uh, the number of CDS of uh, five prime uh, or three prime UTR, uh, the number um, of CDS we, uh, which don't have a start codon and things like that, and the number of exons, the average size of exons, of proteins. All of these information are very important to, to have a, an idea of how your annotation looks. Um, if you had a very small average le gene length, for example, it would mean that Phenalotate had trouble finding genes on your genome and, um, and it could give uh, an evidence of having a, a bad result. Uh, you often uh, use this number to compare two results uh, between, uh, between them and, and decide which annotation looks uh, correct. Okay, and finally, you have three other data sets uh, that are table to ASN uh, data. We'll not see them in detail now, we'll see them a, a bit later after a functional annotation. All right, so now we have a, 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 an annotation, a structural annotation. We have all the position of the genes. Now we want to know the function of these genes. And for that, we will use two tools that are eggnog mapper and interposcan. So let's launch them by running eggnog here. So we will run them on the protein sequences of, uh, that were predicted, data set number 16. Uh, it's a protein, there are protein sequence. Uh, you take the latest version of the EGNOG data, database and you can leave uh, all the other option as is, except um, in the uh, output option here, there's a, an option here that say exclude header lines and it starts from output files. So we don't want to activate this option. Otherwise we won't be able to use the output file in the following, uh, in the rest of the tutorial. So let's execute it. And then we will run interposcan here. So you take this one, this one is an older version that is not uh, up to date. 
Okay, so once again, we select the protein sequences. We want to, to say Interpol scan that they are protein sequences. We, we select the latest version of Interpol scan here. And then uh, we can select which uh, application in Interpol scan we want to launch. Here you can select them all, except if you are very uh, in a hurry. Um, Interposcan is using, can use a few other programs that are uh, non-free uh, software, which means um, it requires um, some manual uh, install, uh, installation by the, the admin of your Galaxy instance. So here we will not use them, but you could try, choose to, to use them by selecting them here. Uh, if you know that they are installed on the Galaxy server. It is the case on usegalaxy.eu if you are, if you're interested. Mm, okay, and the other options can stay as is. We just uh, in the output format here we will select also the XML format, um, and that's it. We execute. Uh, just a few words to explain uh, what each tool will do. So first, Interproscan uh, is just a tool that will look at each sequence, each protein sequence, and tries to, to identify the presence or not of a, a huge database of uh, motifs and, and patterns. So in a, there is a, a database which is named Interpro, which contains a lot of uh, protein family signatures or catalytic catalytic sites uh, signatures and um, Interposcan will use all these signatures and try to identify them in all the sequences of the of the annotation we have uh, generated before. And Eggnog will try um, to compare each protein sequence to a database of uh, protein orthologs from a lot of different uh, species. So it will try to, um, to recognize your protein as being a, as being a member of a orthology group in a, in, a, in, a lot, in a lot of other species uh, uh, more or less related to, uh, to your, the species you're uh, annotating. And based on the presence of the motif for Interproscan or the correspondence to, um, to an orthology group, each one will be able to assign uh, each protein of your annotation a few uh, information like a name or a function or, or even gene ontology terms or things like that. We'll see that in the, in the output files. Let's have a look at the uh, eggnog mapper results. First, you have a seed orthologs uh, output, which is not so interesting. In fact, it just tells you this protein from your annotation uh, matches uh, this protein from the eggnog data database. It's interesting, but not that much. And you have a lot of information on which part of each sequence match which part of uh, the other sequence. But if you look at the annotation output here, it's a tabular file, and there you have a very um, very interesting information. So for each sequence of your annotation, sometimes you don't get results. You, you can see there is no fun 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, uh, uh line because there is no match in, uh, in Eggnog Mapper. But for when you have results, like for this gene, you know which uh, sequence of the Eggnog data database uh, matched this one. And you have a score and evaluate to, to know if it's uh, significative or not. You have identi um, identifiers for orthology groups from the Eggnog database. And most importantly, you have a lot inf of information on like a description. So uh, a human readable name for, for your uh, protein. And a lot of other identifiers like uh, short names or symbols and uh, gene ontology terms or uh, Keg terms, yes, this, this uh, ones, or EC numbers, for example, and uh, other databases uh, information like CASI or PFAM. So that's a lot of information for uh, genes, uh, for each gene uh, in this file. And you get uh, 
kind of similar information in uh, the Interpol scan output here. So it's easier to read it in the TSV output, but it's the same information as in the XML file. And here again, for each uh, gene, so don't be afraid, it's not sorted. So we begin by 527, but there are other ones uh, later. Um, here you can see for each gene uh, in this column, um, identifiers of motifs or patterns, if you prefer, that were found in this uh, in this sequence, uh, with the exact name of the source database where this identifier uh, was found. You get some uh, name for each motif that was found, and scores, of course, identifiers in the Interpol um, database, uh, name again, gene ontology terms, uh, metaseq information, you get also reactome, I think we can see a bit, yeah, in this place. Um, so a lot of information and links to other databases. Um, that's very important information. Now we can uh, say, okay, this gene has this function uh, because we have found this motif and uh, it matches data from the unknown databases and this information are coherent. Fine. So now with an annotate, we have a structural annotation. We have launched Interpol scan and Eggnog Mapper to get a functional annotation. And uh, we will want to reunite all this data into a single uh, file. And a very interesting uh, feature in Fananotate is that it is possible to generate files ready to be submitted to NCBI. So uh, at the end of uh, running this tutorial, you should have data that you can submit to the uh, NCBI database and, and uh, reference in, your, in the publication, for example. So that's really comfortable. Uh, just don't try to do it uh, during this tutorial because you don't want to submit uh, uh, yet another annotation of the same genome because uh, uh, it has already been done for this genome. Um, so to do this, Fan Annotate uh, needs a template file uh, that you can generate on the NCBI uh, portal. So if you go to this URL, you get, uh, you need to log in and then you get um, a form as uh, as shown in the tutorial. Here, it looks like this. And if you fill it correctly by following the instruction here, um, you can download the file and upload it to your history. And that's the file uh, that is here, template.sbt. I've already done that before to to make this video not too long, <laughs> um, that's it. So the next step will be to use this template file, the structural annotation and the functional annotation to reunite all this into a single uh, annotation in different formats that we can uh, use for any other uh, analysis later on. To do this, you have one, two, which is for annotate functional annotation here. Um, so first we select the structural structural annotation from the, from the previous fan annotate predict run. So it's this one in gene bank format, that's fine. As usual, we take the latest version of the fan annotate database. Then we can select the NCBI submission template file. So this is the data set number seven here. And there you can select the eggnog mapper output in tabular format annotation output and the interpol scan uh, output in XML format. For um, other analysis, you can also uh, input anti-smash anti -smash, uh, output, but it's not very interesting for this kind of fungi uh, uh, genome. And Phobius too, but this can be done 
already by Interposcan if you have selected the uh, restricted uh, uh, tools. So we don't need to add it again here. Once again, we select the Buscom model uh, that is the closest as possible to the to the to the species we are analyzing. So Mycorales here. Uh, it's still the same strain name here, so Mac1. And here we have a locus tag. Um, that's the prefix of each uh, gene uh, name. Uh, usually it's uh, uh, the NCBI which assign you uh, a locus tag for your genome uh, before submission. So here we will consider we need to use this one, M. Mucedo. Um, then this can be left as is. And finally, we select to keep all the output, which is a long list. Now we just need to run it and be a bit patient. So now this tool is, is finished. We can have a look at the output. And here, once again, we will have the annotation in in different format, for example, the gene bank format here. So it looks a lot um, like the previous output file. The only difference uh, to the gene bank file that we have seen earlier is that now we have some functional annotation that is directly included into the gene bank file, like go terms here, or eggnog identifiers, or um, um, dbxref, so uh, identifiers to external databases, so and symbols like this. So this is very. Um, uh, the file is very much enriched in uh, important data on each gene. As you can see, I still have in this file the fun prefix while in the form before I've selected the M Mucedo locus tag. So that's a mistake only due to the way I recorded this video. But on you, if you learn, if you follow this tutorial by uh, writing everything uh, as written in the tutorial you should have M Mucedo here instead of fun and the same in the other files that were present after. So let's have a look at the other output files. You have the GFF file here, I guess. Mm, wait, no, it's not the GFF. It's just a tabular file with all the annotation. Uh, you have the sequence of the genome itself. So we already added before, so it's not very interesting. The AGP file, um, also, which is uh, the correspondent between contigs and scaffolds. That's also uh, uh, information about the assembly. It's not very useful for us, but it could be asked when submitting the annotation and genome to NCBI. That's why it is generated. You also get the annotation in, in formats uh, that are needed for submission to NCBI, so sequin and TBL here. You have the scaffold sequences, the protein sequences again. Like this, so all the proteins are there, the mRNA, CDS, and the GFF3. That's very important. That's a format that is used by a lot of tools. And just as a gene bank format, it contains uh, the same information as earlier but also uh, the functional annotation that is included into it. So the position as usual, and here you can have some uh, eggnog identifier or, or different names sometimes, and uh, go terms and, and a lot of information that is directly into the GFF file. Mm, you get some statistics. So that's the same time as earlier, but this time in the functional section, you have a lot of uh, numbers, about the numbers of uh, results from Interpro, from EGNOG, from PFAM, and CASIM, et cetera, that are uh, included into Interposcan and EGNOG, number of good terms, et cetera. So this can be useful to know if you have a lot of functional annotation or not. 
uh, that's the most important output files. Also, you have three files like this, like need curating here. Or product must fix or product new names here. And here the summary report. This gives you information about potential problems uh, in the functional or structural annotation that you should have a look at before submitting to NCBI. Um, we'll not go into much details here. Um, okay, so now with fun annotate, we have a good annotation. We have some numbers on this annotation. We have functional annotation, but we are not even sure our annotation is uh, of good quality. Um, there is one way to evaluate this um, by using Busco. Um, Busco is available in Galaxy, so we will uh, launch it now. Um, so here, we want to run it on the proteins uh, that were predicted from the last uh, finalitate functional uh, run. Um, we want to look at proteins as written here. Um, we don't want to auto detect the lineage because we know it's a genome from the mucorales uh, uh, lineage. So we just select it, okay. And the output we want to get is the short summary text and the summary image. And I guess that's it. We just execute. So here, this tool will just try to look at all the sequences of the proteins and see if it finds all the proteins that are expected to be found in the genome of this uh, lineage uh, in a single copy in this genome. So we just have to wait a little to get the results. Let's have a look at the result now. Um, so the text summary looks like this. Oh, uh, Busco searched for 2,449 genes that are expected to be found in this genome. And it could find 2,312 genes uh, to be complete in, a, in, the, in the annotation that we have done with Finalitid. So this is a quite good score. Among these uh, 2,312 uh, 2, uh, genes, there are 2,281 2, genes that are found uh, complete and in single copy. That's, uh, that's the most important. There are a few ones that are duplicated, 31, but that's not too much, so it should be okay. And uh, even fewer that are found to be fragmented. Um, there are still a bit more than 100 uh, genes that are not found in the annotation we have generated. So it could be either because there is a problem in the assembly, some portion of the genomes may not have been sequenced properly and then assembled properly or maybe the uh, annotation itself didn't detect this genome, these genes, even if they are in the gene, genome uh, sequence. Um, to check this, you could uh, run Busco at the level of the genome itself. Uh, and we have done it previously uh, before to prepare this tutorial. And we know that by running Busco on the full genome sequence, it was able to find 2,327 complete uh, Busco, which means a few ones were not found by the annotation. But uh, still, even if the annotation was uh, perfect, um, you would still have a bit more than 100 genes that will, would not be found by Busco. So probably because they are not in the genome sequence, either because they were not uh, properly sequenced or maybe also because these genes are not present in the, in the species that was uh, sequenced. That could be a, a real miss. So now we have a good quality uh, annotation as we just uh, seen with Busco. 
we might want to visualize it. So we can use the JBrowse tool here. Um, here. So it's a genome browser. So we just select the genomes we have annotated. Uh, so it's the, this one, sort assembly. Uh, and then we insert uh, a few tracks that we want to display. Uh, first, we have uh, annotation tracks. So we had this uh, annotation group and we had a GFF3 uh, track. And we take the GFF3 output of the func fun annotated functional tool. And that's all we need to do. And then we had another annotation, um, another track group named RNA-seq, where <clears throat> we will select the um, output of uh, star that where and when we align all the RNA-seq data onto the genome. And we want to display it with a SNP track. And that's it. We just execute and wait a little. Let's look at the output just by clicking the eye here. So you have, um, yes, you can reduce it here and here. So here you have the, like any genome browser, you have the sequence of uh, scaffold, scaffold number one here. And we have zoomed on this region that is displayed from here to there. And you have a, a few different tracks that you can hide or, or show. So you can show the gene models by clicking on the GFF3 track here. So you can see that there are regions that are more or less genome, uh, more or less uh, gene models here. I will open it in another tab. I think it will be easier. Like this, okay. And you can have a look at the uh, RNA-seq data. So here on the GFF3 track, you can see um, the exons that are this kind of rectangles and these are introns in this direction or this trend. And what is interesting is that here you can see the RNA-seq data and you can see the in light gray, the regions where some reads were aligned. And in darker gray, you, you have the regions that, are, that correspond to splitted uh, reads uh, when there is a splice uh, junction. So for example, if you, uh, if you have a read that maps at the end of these exons, um, the uh, maybe half of the read will map to the following exon because it was a sequence on the spliced uh, sequences. So in brief, light gray means exon and dark gray means uh, introns. And here you have a base uh, dark gray, which is uh, some artifacts because some reads were mapped at a one position in there and another one much uh, farther. Uh, so it's not very relevant. Here, these one are, are the most uh, relevant and matches with the exons exons that were predicted by a fun annotate. So in this case, it was ideal by forward fun annotate because you had a lot of RNA-seq data all along the gene, so it's okay. Uh, if you look at the other gene next to it, you can see that there is almost no RNA-seq data at this position. And um, this illustrates the fact that fun annotate is able to use RNA-seq data when there is some uh, to predict genes, but for other regions where there, are, there is no RNA-seq data, it will be able to use the um, uh, alignment of protein from Swiss pot or even using ab initio predictors to predict that at this position, uh, there is a gene because it matches the statistical model uh, used by ab initio predictors or 
or because there is a match with a Swiss Sport protein. So by doing this, you can um, learn a bit how uh, phenotype uh, uh, predicted genes on your genome. Okay, so now we can uh, go on with the last step of this of this tutorial, which is comparing annotation. Because here we have an annotation which looks good, but we may have generated another annotation by using another method, and we don't want to. Well, we don't know how to select the best one. So we have some tools in Galaxy that can help to do this. Um, so we have the, our good annotation. And if you remember well, at the beginning, we retrieved a GFF3 and, and a gene bank format of an alternate annotation, which is a bit different. If you look at it, it just is not exactly the same. Um, the identifiers here are different. And also if you, you would, you could display them in JBrowse and see the exact differences. But here we will use two tools to compare uh, our two annotations. So the first one is Asian Parseval, yes. Or this one here. Um, so we have to choose a reference annotation. So it will be the one we have uh, generated and a prediction, which is the alternate one. And we want to see this prediction is better than uh, our reference one here. Uh, we can leave the rest uh, as is. It's quite advanced options. And um, in the output type, we just want to use the HTML output. And we execute it. And finally, the last tool we will use is fun annotate compare. And here um, we need to choose the two uh, annotation in gene bank format. So you just click and uh, by uh, you, you, you click uh, while holding the control key, you select the latest uh, fun annotate database and that's it. When it's finished, you can have a look at the uh, HTML output. Uh, it's not in the same order uh, just because uh, of the way I recorded this, this video, but uh, you should have the same result as me. Uh, let's have a look at Asian first. So um, here you have the list of all the sequences that were compared between uh, uh, the first annotation and the other one. Um, you can have a look at the whole file. You have some general metrics. Um, you can see, for example, that there is a total of, of this number of genes in the reference gene um, annotation. And there are 8,000 that are shared between the two annotation. Uh, no, wait, there's this number of gene in the reference annotation. And there is this number that are shared between the two and this number that are unique to reference and this number that are unique to prediction. So you have a, a few other metrics. You can see how many genes were perfectly matching between the two annotation. Uh, you can have some numbers on the CDS and exams. You can explore this on your own. Um, and also maybe the most um, evident way to compare this is to look at a, a specific scaffold so if you look at scaffold 11 here, uh, you will see all the loci uh, that were used to compare the two genome, the two annotation. Um, if you select on, uh, the first one here, click on the plus, and here you should see, yes, this uh, kind of representation. Uh, so uh, what it means is that on the reference annotation, uh, of this portion of the genome, uh, there were uh, four genes that were detected with these identifiers in different, uh, on different strands. So three on the reverse strand and one on the forward strand. 
And what you can see is that uh, on the prediction annotation, so the one uh, which is named alternate that we got from another source, um, uh, there, there is only one gene model at disposition that includes all uh, the portion of the other uh, models that are in the reference annotation. Um, so in this example, it's, it is quite striking that probably the reference annotation is, is uh, better than the uh, alternate one because um, there's one gene in the other strand and it's probably more, uh, uh, it's better to have these three genes separated. You can also compare with the RNSIC data, just look back at the um, at it in the JBrowser um, uh, output if you want to, to make sure if it's better to have separate genes or one long one. But in this way, you can have a, a good uh, idea of uh, what are the key differences between the two annotations. Um, here, I know that the reference annotation is the best one because uh, the alternate annotation, annotation was done by me, um, but by running fun annotate with a very uh, badly chosen uh, parameters. So I choose the, the, the uh, bad, uh, um, bad species in the Busco, Busco uh, select list. Uh, I didn't give enough RNA seq data or protein sequences to, to help fun annotate predict, predict good gene structures. So I know this alternate one is probably uh, not a good annotation. Um, now let's have a look at the other uh, tool for annotate compare here. So that's another way to compare the data from the two annotations. Um, you have some uh, general uh, statistics on the genome level, the number of genes here. Um, that's it. If you look at the autologs uh, tab here, it should come soon. Yeah, if you look at this autologs uh, tab, you should see all the autology relationships that were found between uh, genes from the reference annotation to the alternate one. So you can see which one um, looks like other ones in the other annotation or even in the same annotation if there are some duplications for example. You have some links to the EGNOG uh, database if you want to have more information on this group. You can also have a look at the Inter Interpro or PFAM uh, tabs here so um, you will have some uh, some numbers um, so the on this column, you have some identifiers of different Interpro uh, motifs that were found in uh, either one of the two uh, uh, annotations. And here on, in these columns, you have the number of times they were found in each annotation. So the first annotation is the one you have uh, generated in the tutorial, so the reference one. And it's, as you can see, in many, 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 or even maybe all. Uh, the Interpro uh, entries, you have much more terms, much more proteins that match in the reference annotation than in the alternate one. You can, of course, get more information by clicking on, on each term here. And you end up on the Interpro uh, page describing exactly what this motif is and how it looks like and in which protein it is uh, found. It's quite the same for PFAM. Um, or MEROPS. Like this, or Kazim, like this too. Um, and finally, maybe we can have a look at the Go tab, um, where we can find for each term, uh, wait a minute. Yeah, on this tab, you can see if some terms uh, were found to be uh, enriched, underrepresented, or uh, overrepresented in a specific uh, annotation. So, for example, this term uh, was found to be underrepresented in this uh, annotation while being overrepresented in the other. So, it means 
well uh, we have more genes having this gene in this term in uh, in the, in this annotation so each um, information on its own can help you uh, decide which annotation is the best for the rest of the analysis. And finally, you will select one and, and stick to it uh, for the other analysis. OK, so congratulations. You have uh, uh, arrived at the end of this tutorial. It was a pretty long one if you have followed all the steps with a, a few long steps. But uh, uh, I try to make this tutorial as close as possible to what you would do in, in real life uh, to get a, a proper annotation for your genome using fun annotate. But of course, you could use, use other tools. Um, that's it. Um, often, when you end up with an annotation on a genome, uh, in fact, you will realize that there's no perfect annotation. And sometimes on specific gene families, uh, you might get some strange results while the rest of the annotation looks overall uh, quite good. So in this case, uh, you might be interested in following the um, Apollo tutorial. So it's in the genome annotation section here. Um, here, so you have a, a a complete tutorial on how you can use the Apollo server at usegalaxy.eu to modify some gene structures based on other evidences and how to modify some functional annotation on, on specific genes uh, manually in a sort of a Google Doc uh, of annotation. Um, that's it. So just to finish, don't forget um, to uh, yes, to have a look at the at the feedback form at the end of the tutorial, just uh, just uh, fill it uh, as soon as possible because it is very very useful to for us to improve uh, the training material on on the GTA. Thanks for listening. Thanks for uh, watching this and for doing the tutorial.